in this color grading tutorial, guys. I'm gonna be showing you how you can create this beautiful rustic autumn faded look in your images using Lightroom Classic. And I'm gonna start right now. Right guys, so the very first thing you want to do is go ahead and choose a photo. Now I've recently been to the Yorkshire Dales and I was lucky enough to photograph some red squirrels and also a fox. Now this is great for creating a rustic autumn look because we're gonna be kind of muting the greens and we're gonna be highlighting the oranges, reds and yellows that you can see in the image. So to replicate this look, you can choose any photo, but I'd recommend one that's got nice oranges or even greens, maybe one shot in a forest. That's what I would recommend, but choose choose any photo and see if this particular effect works for you. So let's go ahead and choose this photo here. Right, so what we're going to do is go over to the develop panel on the right hand side. Then what we're going to do is drop down to the basics panel first. Now, I'm going to go ahead and warm this up. So I'm going to choose 4% temperature there because I did shoot on auto white balance for this shot. So there's a little bit of greens involved. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take this and I'm going to go for 1% tint there. Again, if you shot on custom, that you won't necessarily have to do this particular part. But again, I did shoot on auto white balance just for speed and consistency. So I've gone ahead and just changed the white balance there. Now inside the exposure here, we'll just need to brighten this up. So I'm gonna brighten it up by an entire stop. Bring back some of that information that was lost in the background. But don't worry, if it looks a bit too bright, we'll be able to fix this in post. Then I'm gonna go ahead and add in a decent amount of exposure here to create that kind of a little bit higher of a, an exposure. So I'm gonna go for a, a 50% here. But again, we're gonna bring back some of that information when we use the tone curve. So then I'm going to go to the highlights. I'm going to drop that down by uh, minus 70. And then with the shadows here, I'm going to go and bring those down as well by minus 20. So I'm going to go for minus 20 there. I'm going to leave the whites and the blacks alone. Now texture clarity and dehaze. I'm going to increase the texture by 10. I'm going to increase the clarity by 5. And I'm going to go to the dehaze by 5 as well. Then with Vibrance here, I'm gonna go select Vibrance, drop that down by minus 10, and then I'm gonna to go to Saturation, a slightly less of a change, I'm going to go to minus five there. Now if I do the before and after, you can see we've got a, a fairly good effect at the moment, we're more isolating the subject, but there's a lot more to do. So let's turn off Basics and let's go to Tone Curve. Now inside the Tone Curve, what we want to do is to create a bit more of a matte effect in the shadow areas, and the Tone Curve is great for this. So what I'm gonna do is lift up the blacks by not affecting the rest of the image or rest of the exposure. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna put a midpoint in the highlights, put a point in the midtones, a point in the shadows, then in the black, so the very last point on the left-hand side, this will be input of zero. What we're gonna do is increase the shadows like so. We're gonna bring those up slightly. And what you'll see, if I go ahead and zoom into the shadow area, you'll see that if I do the before, I do the after, we're creating a bit more of a matte look in the shadow areas. Now, the higher you go, the more extreme will be. So I'm gonna go for an effect uh, similar to here. So I've got an input of zero, which is my pure blacks, and I'm outputting them at 56. So I'm really brightening up those blacks there, creating a lot more of a matte effect. And I really like this effect, and I highly recommend adding it to your style. It creates that kind of muted tone, which I, I really like for this particular style of color grading. Okay, so let's go ahead and turn off Tone Curve, and let's go to HSL Color. Now, we don't necessarily want to be affecting the overall color of the image, because we, you know, it's a very natural image, and especially with wildlife, you don't want to affect the colors too much. So we, what we're gonna do is we're gonna leave the hue alone, and we're gonna use saturation and luminance to affect the brightness and saturation of that natural color that we're keeping. So what we're gonna do is not affect hue in this particular situation, and let's go over to saturation here. So with, with red, because we obviously want to highlight the red, we're gonna bring up the saturation there. So we're gonna go for five there. Then with the orange, we're gonna to go to, or increase that again by 15%, so five and 15 plus for red and orange. Now in yellow, we're going for a little bit less, so we're gonna go for minus 15 in that particular case. 
Then the greens, we're gonna drop down by minus 50, because we want to kind of crush the greens in this overall color grading effect. Again, highlight a lot of the oranges by increasing those, but decreasing other colors in the image. And that's what we're gonna be doing. Greens, aquas, blues, that's what we're going to be reducing in this particular effect. So we go to aquas here, we're gonna drop those down as well. So we're gonna drop those down by minus 75. We're also gonna do the same with the blues, minus 75. And the last one we're gonna do is minus 75 for the purples. But we are gonna leave the magentas alone because if you zoom in, some of the fox and other colors are found in the magenta hues, especially skin tones or anything like that. So we don't wanna crush those too much. We're just gonna leave those at zero. Right, let's go over to luminance. Now luminance controls the brightness of that color. And again, if we wanna reduce the brightness of the greens, we can do that using the luminosity sliders. So inside here, we're gonna go ahead and bring up the brightness of of those reds. So we're gonna go for 10% there. Then we're gonna to go to oranges. We're gonna drop those down by minus five. Then with the yellows, we're gonna drop that down by minus 25. Then in the greens, we're gonna drop that down by minus 35. Then the last three, we're minus 75. So the aquas, minus 75. We're gonna to go to the blues. We're gonna do minus 75 for that and the same with the purple, so minus 75 there. And again, the same situation, we're gonna leave the magenta slider alone, because again, that is found in the skin tones, and we don't necessarily want to affect the skin tones in this particular tile of color grading. Okay, so let's go ahead and turn off HSL. And what I'm gonna do is show you the before and after as we go. So here is the before, and here is the after. And let's this effect is working really nicely. And just with the HSL, if I do the before and after, you can see how we've affected. So we've brought down the kind of brightness in the background, we've brought down the darkness while keeping the fox and the overall orange cones nice and bright, which is really, really nice. Okay, so let's go ahead and move on to color grading. Now inside the color grading, we want to affect the shadows and the highlights. We're not affecting the midtones in this particular case. So go over to the shadow area here, and what we're gonna do is add in a green. So we're gonna go bring that green round. I recommend a hue of around 125, seems to work in this particular case. And then we're gonna go ahead and bring in that saturation. What we're doing is we're replacing we're overlaying that MAC look that we've got that was predominantly black and we're overlaying it with like a green hue, which really works really nice with this rustic autumn look, especially when you complement it with red, which is its complementary color. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and bring that up to around about, let's say 10% in this particular case. Now, you can control the luminosity, which is the brightness of that. So if you wanna bring it up, bring it down. I'm gonna bring it down by about minus five in this case. So I'm gonna go for something like so. And then in the highlights, we're gonna go ahead and add in red. So I recommend a color of 350 in this particular case, which is like a, a reddish purple. And then what I'll do is I'll go ahead and add in saturation. So I'm gonna go home and for about 15% in this particular case. And then again, with luminance, you can mess around with that. I'd bring up the luminance slightly. So let's go for 20 in this particular case. So what we've done is we've added in green into the shadows and we've added in red into the highlights. We've darkened the shadows, luminosity, and we've also brightened the, sh uh, the highlights using luminosity. So we've added in a little bit more natural contrast. And that's what I really like with the color grading panel. If you wanna learn more about the color grading, I've got actually a masterclass video, which I'll add into the link in the description. Okay, right, so let's go off color grading. Let's go ahead down to lens correction. Now inside lens correction, we're only clicking two buttons. We're gonna click remove chromatic aberration and enable profile correction. Now this is a JPEG photo, but if you shot raw, hopefully it will affect any profile corrections that may have been turned off in camera. If you're ever doing anything in Lightroom, make sure these two buttons are always turned on. And that's all we need to do inside lens correction. Brilliant. Nice and simple. Now inside effects, which is our second to last one, I just wanna add in a slight vignette. Now in this particular case, the subject is in the middle of the frame and a vignette will help you kind of emphasize that in the center using luminosity. So it's a really nice way of kind of highlighting certain parts of the image that you want to be more focused upon, especially for the, the viewer. You wanna almost tell a story within your image using a vignette, especially if the, the particular focus is in the middle, really, really helps out with that. Okay, we're gonna to go to our post crop vignette. And I'm gonna go ahead and add that in. Now I'm gonna add in about minus 20, but depending on what type of photo you're working with, you may wanna reduce it or increase it. It's completely up to you. Okay, and then all we need to do, the last thing we do is go into calibration. Now calibration is split up into reds, greens and blues, but this time we're only going to be affecting the blue primary in this particular case. 
I'm gonna go ahead and bring that over. And what you'll see, if I go for about minus 20, it will highlight a little bit more of that red that's found in the fox. So if I do the before, and after of literally just the calibration, you can see it adds in a little bit more red to the fox's face, which is really nice. Just ever so slightly emphasize it. So if I do the before and I lose the after, very subtle, but I must say it works really nicely. If you wanna go for a bit more of a, an extreme look, you can drag it a little bit over, but it looks a little bit too like he's sunburnt now. So let's reduce that down. Let's go back down to minus 20, lovely. Okay, so what I can do is now show you the before and after. So if I do the before, you can see this is a, a basically a raw image. If I do the after, we've ended up with a really nice effect. If I show you down here, we've got a lot of blues in this rocks, but if I show you the after, that's been turned more to a gray tone. And again, creating this rustic autumn look, which I really, really like. So what I can do is show you the before and after. So the before is on the left-hand side and the after is on the right. And as you can see, we've got way nicer colors in the fox's face and the overall background on the after photo. And I love this particular effect for rustic autumn, or I was photographing some red squirrels, see some shots here. I love this particular type of effect. And of course, if you do like it, remember to save it as a preset.